Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's been really gnarly here. And uh, this summer, we've had probably the best summer of surf that we've had uh, in a while, or as good as it gets. We've had some 20 foot swells and some some six and eight foot faces and it's it's building again out there right now and with the with this uh, special full moon that is coming today as we're recording uh we're just wondering how how high the swell is going to get and how high the tide's going to get but we're um, we're stoked to be here right next to saint augustine church uh in waikiki we're going to be right back in a few moments welcome to the bear wasnick adventure kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I, I, I go different. I'm so fortunate. I get to go different places and meet uh, all kinds of different uh, people and it's so tough because the you know there's a saying home is where the heart is and your heart gets attached to people as you travel you know when I, when I was in the surfing world and uh, when I was traveling competing and now traveling and speaking you go certain places and you meet people and just go I already miss them before I even have to say goodbye because I know their good likelihood I might not see them again but one thing that happens is people will come up to me and they'll say you know man I, I'm torn uh you know, I see you riding motorcycles and you have this really adventurous life. And I'm just torn because, you know, I have a family and I'm just I kind of like to be adventurous. But I got a fa- and I I stop them in their tracks and I just tell them the most adventurous thing a human being can do is to be a father, whether that's a, a priest being a father to a flock. But I remember when I was uh, in boring social studies class uh, as, a, as a senior in high school uh, trying to stay awake, and I had this epiphany that one day I could be a father. I could have children. And it, it, it changed my whole life. From that moment, my focus was I'm going to work two jobs, maybe three. I'm going to get into college. I'm going to work as I work my way through. I, it, uh, everything was about I'm going to be, I got to be a gunslinger. I got to be a hired gun. I got to make money. I got to take care of my kids. It also made decisions for me. I never went to drinking parties. I didn't have sex out, you know, before marriage. I was dedicated to being a father from that moment on. And so I think when people uh, mistake, make a mistake when they think that Bear does all these things, running with the bulls or whatever, but but the real great adventure, the greatest venture you can have is to bring an a, 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 a eternal being into existence and to be a father. And, you know, we call God the Father. And I remember when I was young, I used to think, yeah, God the Father, he's, he's kind of like a father. Uh, you know, he, we're using that kind of imagery because he's kind of like my dad or like, you know, fathers that I know. But the reality is God is father. For, you know, God, uh, love, love procreates. And God the Father eternally begot his son, Jesus Christ. And so to, it's such an honor to be called a father. That means that uh, I'm trying to be an icon, a sacramental, uh, an example of God the Father here on earth, although we fail miserably. And so uh, I, my guest today, uh, Kevin Poss, is a deacon in the Catholic Church, as my father was, by the way. And uh, when he when we invited him to, to be on the show, he goes, well, I'm not a very adventurous guy. My whole focus is, is, is my family. That is the focus. That is the great adventure. And so, uh, men, listen, listen in. And uh, if you're not the guy that's going out there and you know, dropping into 20 foot swells, but you're but you're working and you're working hard and you're raising a family, and you're bringing it up in the Lord. I just remember when Archbishop Chaput was speaking in Napa Valley about four years ago, someone raised their hand. So Archbishop, what's a real good evangelistic program that we could tap into that help us evangelize? And he just said, get married, have lots of children, raise them up in the Lord. That's God's evangelistic program. And that is to me, the greatest adventure you can have. And so I'd like to welcome my guest, Deacon Kevin Poss. Aloha, Deacon. Aloha, Barry. Great to be here. Thank you. Hey, tell tell us where tell everybody where we bumped into each other. So it's uh, on our way to Oahu. We were standing at the counter in Minneapolis Airport. We were my wife and I were getting bumped off. Actually, it was my grandson that was getting bumped off of uh, off the plane, and I was up there trying to get another seat. And I hear you walk up and say, Wozniak, W O Z. And I turned around and I recognized you from watching the long ride home. I said, Bear, 
you stuck out your hand, we shook hands and became fast friends. Yeah, that's the way it is too, isn't it? You become fast friends. Mm -hmm. And what you did is you, you uh, gave up your seat. You know, airlines are just going crazy these days. And your whole family made it to Hawaii, but you didn't. It took you, you had to do the roundabout way to get, to get here, but you got here eventually too. Yeah, yeah my wife is actually, uh, she and I both got bumped together. So it ended up being a good thing. We uh, got kind of messed around as people do in the airports, but we got there. How romantic is that? But so so the so then we saw it. We got to bump into bump into you guys a couple of times, and uh, your big thing is is bringing is, is is family. And you and you brought who did you bring on this family adventure? I brought Hawaii. my youngest daughter, and her husband and two sons, Blake and Caleb. What's her What's her husband's name again? Michael. Michael. I really had a fondness for Michael. I really want him to read my book, uh, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue to his to his kids. I just think yeah. God's got his hand on that guy. He's someone special. Uh, but tell me, so so when they were here, I kept prodding you guys to get them out surfing. Well, how did all that go? Oh, man. You set us up with your buddy Clyde Eichau, and, and Clyde took us out on, a, on an outrigger, which I'd never been on before. And what a rush that was, was to catch a wave and ride it in. And people all over Waikiki Beach looking at us. And we, we caught some nice little waves in. And then Clyde fit my family in with a group that he was going out with and very first time i looked up and here comes my youngest grand or my young grandson blake nine years old riding a wave all the way in and shortly thereafter here comes caleb uh, 11 year old riding a wave all the way in and clyde did a great job with them and they they're still talking about it so what a rush for them yeah all my and sons me to watch it. yeah all my sons work for clyde and by the way blake and caleb their names are have the same letters in them because you you spell Spell Caleb with a K, so they're just kind of transposed with it. You know, love those young men. But, you know, I'll tell you, when you guys were paddling into that wave, um, you know, I think it was an eight-man canoe or maybe it was a ten-man canoe. But when you were paddling, number one in the canoe was who, your daughter? She was in, the, she was in, first, in the front, I think. No, in the front was Michael. Okay. Then, and, the, then, then Brittany, then the two boys, then me, and then there's another guy behind me. But where, where, oh, Brittany, yeah. So anyway, when I saw Brittany paddling, she looked like she'd been paddling her whole life. Her technique was just powerful and, 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 and just so, so, uh, so right on. And Clyde Aikau, for those who don't know, Clyde Aikau is um, nobility really here in Hawaii. He and his brother, uh, Eddie, were the first uh, North Shore lifeguards. Eddie, I talk about him in my book. The Way of Heroic Virtue, uh, he was on the maiden voyage of the Hokulea, the, the voyaging canoe that travels the world. Uh, but on its maiden voyage between the island of Molokai and Oahu, it broke up in heavy seas. And Eddie jumped on his surfboard to paddle for help, and we, and we never found him, never found him. And, and so uh, it, what a profound act of self-donation, you know, go, paddling to go to try to, get some, try to get help. So for you to be with Clyde Aikawa, by the way, he's pretty intense, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's like, let's go. And he's paddling. We, we, we paddle. When Clyde tells you to paddle, you paddle. And you're going to catch a wave whether you want, want to or not. He's going to be in one of the episodes of our, uh, one of our Hawaii episodes soon. But all my kids used to work for him. So like he had pushed someone into a wave. My other son would grab him, push him back out and say paddle. And then my other son would kind of, when they got to him, my other son would stage him and wait for Clyde then to, to, uh, to, um, uh, have them uh, be pushed into a wave. So I'm really glad they got to have that experience. It, it really is something that can stay with them the rest of their life, that they stepped out of their comfort zone. And, uh, and there's, it's also something about when you're, when you're riding a bicycle, you're pedaling it, you know. But when you ride a wave, something else has taken over. And you got to learn to flow with that, that wave. And, and that's part of our, our relationship with the Lord, too, is to let go and, and to let God. So uh, when we, we've been talking about... Uh, your life as a father and a grandfather, uh, and, you're, and, and that you're a deacon. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see Kevin is wearing his diaconate, the Roman collar like my dad used to wear. It just looks so cool. And where, what state are you guys in? Iowa. Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, we're talking to Kevin Poss, uh, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk to a little bit about his, his adventure in, uh, in pursuing God's will, uh, in uh, his conversion experience and is, is pursuing God's will as a deacon. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can find us at deepadventure.com, and we'd like to invite you to join Bear School of Manliness. It's a three-year curriculum for, uh, for men, and we go through it together, but also it's for men and their sons. A, a father can lead their sons uh, on a weekly journey 
uh, uh, exploring uh, 36 different areas of manliness. So we'd invite you to go to deepadventure.com, check it out. Uh, and uh, Kevin, where can people find you? The only place I'm really on the on my email is is uh, poss p o s s k sixty three at gmail dot com. So I don't have a website. I'm not uh, just a just a parish deacon. He's yeah. He's doing the stuff. That's is what we love. That's what we love. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Gitter. If you don't know it in your knower, you better get it in your gitter because if you haven't got it in your gitter, you'll never know it. Yep, you heard that right. Information ain't understanding any more than understanding is wisdom. Knowing is just a nod of your head, but knowing something in your knower means you got understanding. But before the knowing, you got to get information into your gitter. Your gitter is a place where the information is caught rather than see it as a flyby. Got it? Good. Having fun yet? I am. Folks today know boo information thanks to the internet, but it's mostly information without context. Regarding context, it can be likened to people saying they want socialism. I get wanting a lot of free stuff, but there ain't no free lunch partner. Somebody paid for it or will pay for it. The chickens will come home to roost. Folks who lived through the Cold War and beyond got context to socialism, they saw how it eventually ruined everything it touched. Their context got them wise concerning politicians promising more and more free stuff. Jesus said a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. It took time for the bitter fruit of socialism to ripen and be eaten. It always got to be a nasty tasting. So the story of the Mori is this. Get context to what you're reading and hearing. We need more folks with wisdom rather than a bunch of semi-automatic word slingers. King Solomon wrote, Wisdom will be life for you. Wisdom, not words, ensures your tree will produce good fruit. Take a bite and enjoy. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I got to remind everybody, my publisher says to remind you, my book, uh, it was a bestseller at one time, the, the book, um, uh, uh, <laughs> A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, uh, when it was first published. And, it's, and Sophia Press grabbed it and said, we're going to republish this book because it's, it's got some really great content about um, kind of using my life and, spir and surfing as kind of an allegory for the Carmelite. Uh, approach to spirituality and then the other book uh, Deep Adventure the way of heroic virtue God's calling us all to be heroes every man and woman has that sense within them the call to to do to be heroic and to be a saint they uh, they want to see heroic virtue to be a saint we discern did they have joy which I think is goes hand in hand with it and did they, and did they teach did they teach the truth? Did they represent the gospel? And so go to, deep, go to uh, our website, deepadventure.com. Go to our store. You can buy our books there. Uh, we have with us today deep, uh, a Deacon Kevin Poss, who I got to know. I got to see him in action in real life. I got to see him with his family in an airport, um, kind of juggling things, helping them get on board, and then here in Hawaii. And I saw that he was really a man of his word. So your, uh, your, can you share with us your journey towards... Uh, a deeper walk with the Lord and eventually your call as a deacon? Yeah, so I, I grew up 
Catholic, went to Catholic schools. My, uh, you know, my privilege to have two parents who sent us to Catholic schools and, and lived and taught us how to work hard and all that great stuff that just those Catholic virtues that, that good Catholic parents do. But I had a cousin who had, at the time, was her ninth child. Her little baby was named Monica. And they've since had two more children, but Monica died in a pretty horrific farm accident. And when I went to the funeral, my cousin just wrapped her arms around me and you know said, thank you for coming here. And, and we got to the grave site. Now, there's so much I can go into, Bear. How, how old were you at this time? Yeah, yeah share, share with I, me. Well, this was 2002, so I was 39. Okay. So... So lived, you know, Catholic life. We went to church all the time. Every Sunday, didn't miss mass, you know, um, just a solid um, everyday Catholic. And when when this happened, you know, her baby died and her husband was horrified. And he said, how can you ever forgive me? Because it was, it was while he was watching her that she passed. And my cousin just looked at him and said, how can I forgive you? Not forgive you. God chose you to give this child back. And her faith and the other example that she, you know, at the grave site, she just said, she just, she had to sing, our God is an awesome God and said, listen, he took my most pure two-year-old child that has no sin. I know I have a daughter who is a saint in heaven. And she was talking in ways that were just quite outstanding. And I could see there was something different about her. And I said, Margie, you know, what's going on? And she said, well, you need to go to this place called the Lord's Ranch. The Lord's Ranch oh, is outside yeah, of El Paso, Texas. Yeah, yeah, um, it's outside of El Paso, Texas, and they do incredible ministry in Juarez. And I can go on about miracles and feeding the poor and multiplication of food. And when we got there, Father Rick Thomas had been there, and Father Rick is just a—he's a force. And um, unfortunately, he's passed on, or fortunately for him, he's passed on to you know to, to greater glory. But when you got there. All of a sudden, we were exposed to alter, uh, what I would suggest is maybe the ultimate Catholic community, feeding the poor, taking care of the hungry, taking care of the needy, the neediest of the needy. They would go to the dump in Juarez, and uh, uh, one of their kind of a famous miracle is God multiplied food on Christmas Day. The first day they went to the dump, and they, they brought food to the dump. And God multiplied it. Well, I remember and, the story because I, I, I was a uh, I led the I led the prayer at a charismatic prayer meeting in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Father Robert Getz at that time was in um, El Paso uh, during the time mm-hmm. of this miracle, and he was a social activist, but he didn't really have that personal, really personal walk with the Lord. And he went there on that day. And uh, what happened is in the dump at Juarez, there's two warring factions that fight over the garbage. And they said, so only one of them is going to come. So you only have to bring this much. And they brought burritos and tacos, and, 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 and both sides came on Christmas Day. Right. And they just kept giving and giving and giving. And it's a documented uh, a miracle, in the, and more than yeah. one there. And the Lord's Ranch in its genesis was a ranch that it was just land that people could come in and, and, and plant and work and take care of and then harvest from there. So people would actually come and who had need of food would come and work on that ranch so that they could have their own garden. And mm-hmm. then in time, it became more, more than that. So, yeah, so I have a, a, a I, I was there, I mean, back in the day in the 70s when that was first happening. And so I, I so the, the, the zeal and the, 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 the love of the people there is so profound. Amazing people. Well, so we, we, we went there, and as I said, we not, not only those kinds of miracles, but we saw people, we went into the jails, and, um, you know, miracles happened there. People that I know began to speak in, in a, in a, in a wasn't necessarily tongues, but it was in a, a real, when they were praying the rosary, they started praying in a real Irish brogue. And then well, they were uh, one of my family. In, they were praying in tongues. Yeah, and it, right, Sure. And, and so then we went to mass and it was a bilingual mass where the priest was praying and he would say the prayers in Spanish and English. And a family member began to say the words exactly at the same time as the priest in Spanish and in English. And they know, they don't know a word of Spanish. And you so know, I'll, t- I'll tell you what the, 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 the charismatic renewal so powerful, uh, the, the move, the fresh wave of the Holy spirit back in those days and now, and still, and I was part of the leadership of that charismatic prayer group in, in, in Las Cruces where there was maybe 20 and then there was hundreds. 
And I remember um, mm-hmm. thinking to the Lord, why would you give us the gift of tongues? Why this weird gift of tongues sort of phenomena? And just the Lord, just I just clear as a bell. Because of my experience there, uh, I had uh, I, I got to pray with the Hispanics there in small little groups when we were together, and they would be so gracious, and they would pray in Spanish. I mean, they would pray in English, mm-hmm. and it was beautiful. But when they would pray in Spanish, oh, the heartfelt, uh, the heartfelt feeling of their prayer just came through, and so it was lo- it was obvious to me that praying in your native tongue. Yeah, uh, so much more uh, emo- so much more of everything flows forth. Well, if we're Christians, what's our native? Wh- what's our what's our native? Uh, ho- what's our homeland? Is it America? Is it? No, it's heaven. And so naturally, it's 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 naturally uh, we want to speak in our native tongue, and our native tongue is a heavenly language. Now, when I first received the gift of tongues back in those days, uh, it was a very rough sounding language. And it was a recognizable kind of language to me. It seemed to, seemed Eastern European. And my dad said to me, "Come here. Let me hear what, what happened. Let me hear this language that you received tonight." Uh, he well, he hadn't gone to the one of the prayer meetings yet. And I spoke to him, and he goes, "I recognize some of those words. I recognize God, and I recognize love, because he was Ukrainian. So it wasn't Ukrainian, but it was it was a it was close enough where he could kind of understand it." Then a few days later, when we prayed with him to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit in that special charismatic way, um, my language changed from the tongues of men to be the tongues of angels, and I and I received a heavenly language which I pray in now. And I love Saint Paul said, "I praise God that I pray in tongues more than any of you, because he who prays in tongues edifies himself." And there's a beautiful power unleashed uh, in you when you pray and you and you release your your tongue. Uh, to the Holy Spirit, because words are so powerful. Jesus is called the Word of God. And so when you release yourself, uh, and I just believe every Christian has that gift. It's just uh, when will God, when, you know, just releasing that gift. But I know mm-hmm. when I pray for someone in tongues, Peter, that I, I, uh, I zero in on what needs to be prayed for, first in tongues, and then I understand it, and I pray in English. And that, that gift opens the door for other miracles, whether it's healing or discernment, you know, spirits or, or something more prophetic. So, yeah, I mean, what you what when they 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 prayed in in, in an Irish brogue and then someone was praying and uh, was able to pray in Spanish. What kind of effect did that have on you? Well, it just really, you know, the cumulative effect of the week that we spent there was was hard to hard to measure. It was just it was life changing. It was li- life altering, and it was. It was opening our eyes to a greater depth of what God wants for us and, and how God wants to interact in our world and with us and in us and through us and, and to use us in so many ways. And uh, so as it was in a, it was the cumulative effect of the week that we spent there was uh, immeasurable. But the most profound thing you experienced there was love. Absolutely. I mean, Jesus didn't say you'll know them by their gifts. Mm-hmm. So you'll know them by their fruit. And you saw the fruit of the Holy Spirit there. I did. I did. You know, we saw healings, physical healings, spiritual healings. We heard stories after stories after stories of just things that people today don't want to believe, you Mm -hmm. know, and uh, which is sad to me because, you know, what what really came out, one of the things that came out to me was that, you know, I used to kind of feel like Jesus lived 2000 years ago or that God was alive 2000 years ago. And it really came out to me was that He's more alive through the Holy Spirit in our in our lives today than than ever, and He wants to interact in us in a in an extremely spiritual way through His Holy Spirit. You know, as uh, the Book of Acts, you will have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and um, and I and I think that unfortunately there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. We need the power of the Holy Spirit now more than ever. I mean, we're the, just the spiritual warfare that we see all around us. We need to have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We need to have discernment. We need to be able to speak uh, when boldly when, as the Holy Spirit gives us the words to speak. I see so many people standing up at school boards now and speaking with real wisdom. And I go, that has to be from the Holy Spirit. You know, they're not being confrontational. They're speaking uh, with, without angst. They're just speaking the truth. 
And so, so those of you who are listening, ask the Lord to give you a new language. Maybe he will give you, releasing you the gift of tongues, but maybe he'll also release in you the ability to share, the, share his truth uh, to the world that we need so badly. And maybe some of you, because of listening to this, will be called to the diaconate. We're going to talk a little bit about, about Kevin's call to the diaconate when we get back. Uh, K- Kevin Post, uh, deacon from Iowa. What city are you in? Sioux City. Okay, what's your address? Just kidding. No, but what, <laughs> what, 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 what's your email address? PossK63 at gmail. P-O-S-S-K 63 at gmail.com. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you guys. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com, coming to you with a deep adventure moment. I'm in my home of Waikiki Beach. Earlier today, my beautiful bride, Cindy, and I paddled out. Nice head-high surf, paddled into some beautiful waves together. We tandem surf together. You may not know this, but I'm a world champion tandem surfer. And Cindy and I paddle together. We get up together. She turns and faces me. I put her in a high overhead lift, and we surf the waves like that. And I've always thought that tandem surf is a great example of what it means to be a soul in love with Jesus. We paddle really hard together. To me, that's that determination. And to me, paddling is like praying. You have a vision, you pray, and we pray together. And things happen when a husband and wife pray together. And then you paddle in. And then we get up together. And when we get up, she gets up and she comes back towards me. And I pull her back towards me. And she rests her head on my chest, kind of like the beloved like John did with Jesus in the Last Supper and like the beloved does in the Song of Solomon resting on the the bed of Solomon as she's being carried she rests her head and she trusts in me and she can feel my movement on the surfboard and she flows with my movement but then there comes the moment in our our walk with Jesus we paddle hard in prayer we drop in fully committed to Jesus into a big wave we get up and we rest in him and trust in him but then there's that moment when she turns and she leaps and I lift her in an overhead lift. That leap of faith is what so many of us just never get around to. And it's where the adventure begun. You spend time with the Lord, you, you've given your life to the Lord, but He's nudging you to do something and you know what it is. There's a calling on your life. Maybe it's a little thing He's asking you to do right now that will lead to bigger things or maybe it's a thing that seems too big for you. But believe me, the adventure begins when you depart from the wide path and take that leap into the deep adventure that God has for you. This is Bear Wozniak from deepadventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. If you go to our website, deepadventure.com, you can press a button and subscribe to our email. And then what happens is you get a weekly email on Saturday mornings. You get an email of that weekend's uh, radio show on EWTN, but it's the YouTube version of it. You can also go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, at Deep, uh, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure, and you can check it out. Ba- at, that, at that YouTube channel, we have... Um, about 180 uh, 15-minute uh, teachings where I went through the whole catechism while standing u- usually by the beach or wherever I am in the world. So go to deepadventure.com, subscribe, and become part of our ohana. We're talking with Deep Deacon uh, Kevin Poss, and I just love being around a deacon. I, I just love the, the calling, especially my dad. He was a deacon first in Duluth, Minnesota, and then 
in the island of Molokai, where um, you know Saint Damien and Saint Marianne, and and then in the island of Maui before he pa- before he passed on. So, wh- what 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 happened next? Then you had this this charismatic experience, a profound experience of seeing God's love uh, down at the Lord's Ranch uh, near El Paso. Mm-hmm. So my cousin Joe was lived on the ranch quite a bit. He would be there half the year, and he started calling me Deacon. I'm like, I don't even know what a Deacon is. You know, I kind of remember hearing something about a couple really? of in guy season. He was prophesying to you. He was. He was. He was. He kept Deacon. Hey, Deacon. And so, and I, you know, I kind of passed it off. I didn't really think too much about it, and and it was in the back of my mind. This was probably, you know, in the early 2000s. And my day job, I am a physical therapist. When I graduated mm. from PT school, I had a master's of physical therapy. To get so a doctorate. Cool. It's so yep. cool that you do that. It's such a cool thing. It is. It's a. It's a gift. It's a blessing. And um, so, and I'm. And I'm. I, there's a good story about how I became a, a physical therapist. On top of it, but maybe another yeah. day. No, no. Let me hear that. I want to hear. Oh, that. so I was already married and had three kids, and I hadn't been to college, and I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew the job I was in was, was not going to be my thing for the next 40 years. It just didn't feel right. It wasn't right. It wasn't, wasn't my calling. So I started looking around about going to college and I could have gone to business. I could have done this or that. And I literally was watching, I was re- redoing a dresser and there was the 1988 Olympics on and they were showing somebody going through rehab to mm. get back to be in the Olympics. And I thought, I could do that. I would love to work with people. And so I started checking into it. Well, I'm married. I have four kids, three kids going to Catholic schools and money wasn't flowing abundantly. But I said to my wife, who was just amazingly gracious, I said, I need to go to, I need to go to college. I mean, for our family, I need to go to school. And she was working a, a very busy job. She was very good at what she did. And she just supported me 100%. Said, well, what do you think? And I said, I think I'd like to be a PT. And uh, so I started checking into it. And I find out that it's four years undergrad. And then at the time, it was extremely difficult to get into PT school. And uh, it was going to be another two years. They told me I probably wasn't going to be able to work. My wife said, that's okay. We'll figure it out. I, I will. I will. She's an amazing money manager and figured it out and set us up so we could go. Praise so I went God. up to the University of What a of woman. South- what a woman. Yeah, absolutely. I drove up to the University of South Dakota. And her name is Stormy. <laughs> That's a warning. (laughs) (laughs) So I drove to the University of South Dakota about 40 miles from here, and I went in there, and they were extremely discouraging. And I walked out to my car, and I sat down in my car, and I prayed. Probably the first time in my life I ever said, Lord, then what? And he Mm. said, I I sat there for a minute. I turned on my car, and the music group Boston is one of my favorite groups. The song says, keep on chasing your dream. And I'm Praise like, God. are you talking to me, Lord? And he was. And so that's how I became a PT. And so, so when I was, yeah, go ahead. When I was looking to get my doctorate, it was, it's a, you know, it's a pretty big endeavor. And I prayed about it. And I just said, Lord, this is something you, is this something you want me to do? And I'd already been to the Lord's ranch. I'd already kind of had a spiritual conversion. And so I, I just said, Lord, is this, is this what you're calling me to? Is this what you want me to do? And, and I got just bare. I can't tell you. It was just a clear no. Just boom. Just right in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And my response was immediately, then what? And he said, I heard the word clearly deacon. Praise God. And so I was like, okay, then that's what I'll do. I want to talk about that because I think there's people listening here right now that are wanting to know discerning direction in their life. And um, I, I remember when I began this ministry, I flew to Tampa and I read a book on the way by a, a local pastor here. And he tells a story of, 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 of when he was in Japan. There's a certain mountain where you go and you will release a bird. And the word he said was, let that bird fly. And I, I landed in Tampa, went to this Tampa men's conference, the first one I'd ever been to. And I just started my first little radio station and my first book. And I was thinking about, you know, more bodacious things. And I'm talking to this priest, and I go, yeah, and this and this. And he goes, well, you got to let that bird fly. You're just going to have to let that bird fly. He said about three times. <laughs> the Lord gives us dreams. There's a, ver- a verse in Habakkuk that says, write the vision down in words that are big enough and letters that are big enough so that the one who's reading it can run while they're reading. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for it will surely come. So if you have something on your heart, if you don't, Ask God, because the Bible says he will give you new and right desires. 
Ask God to put that desire in your heart and then write it down. That means have clarity about it. This is what I want. This is when I'm going to accomplish it. This is how I'm going to do it. Whenever I have a vision, like I'm going to pedal across the United States or I'm going to do, you know, go for a world title, I get a blue notebook out and I stuff pieces of paper in the front sleeve of it while I'm doing my research. And then the back is like my out basket when I send out letters or whatever I need to do. In the middle, I start writing these things down. And so the Lord has a vision and, uh, and uh, for you, for each person, that, that, that is their purpose. And so, um, so be attentive to that. And if you don't know what that is, ask the Lord to show you. And if you get a hint of it, just begin to walk because the Lord can move you when you're moving. It's like we used to have power, before we had power steering, I remember my, my dad had a car. You couldn't turn the wheel until the car moved. So listen to the Holy Spirit and ask the Lord, and then move on your dreams. But remember, you're also asking God to close doors. Open just the one that he wants. So you heard the Lord say no. And what did he say? He just put very clearly, I heard deacon. <laughs> so there, there it was. And, you know, I want to say something with that. You know, deacon isn't something that you, that you choose. Mm -hmm. Being a deacon is a calling. And it's a calling from God. It's not me saying I want to be a deacon because I think it, would be cool to preach and I got a lot of stuff I want to say or I want to be and up there's on a the altar. special place for deacons in, in heaven too you know, you know <laughs> I hope so. yeah there is a in revelation yeah yeah so that's what I heard and, it, and, and as, as I said being a deacon you know it's a calling and, it, and it's something from God that you answer yes or no to and and not not only that but your wife does too your whole family Absolutely. has to be responsive to this call um and then, and then, so then, how did that? One of the when my dad went through his diaconate formation, Kevin, I saw a tremendous formation in him. He changed as a person, he, who he became as a man, dramatically mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Talk to us about that, the formation. Well, you know, it's a five-year program for us here in Iowa. Um, it's led by a, a deacon here in our diocese, David Lopez, and he's put his heart and soul into it. And it's a five-year program. You go through some of the basics and, and really it's it's a time of discernment and growth. And, and you know, I, I kind of played games a little bit it's like, all right, Lord, you're calling me to say yes. Am I really called to be a deacon? Because it is a big commitment. And and, um, you know, eventually it's like he was like, quit playing around. I'm calling you to be a deacon, be a deacon. And Stop so, trying to be so humble. I mean, sometimes it's like we play this false humility bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and he just he, you're this is what I'm calling you to. And, it, and it's a lot of formation, but I think what, what happens is the growth of a deacon, you know, you, you do hold a, a, a place of responsibility within the church. And, um, you know, you have to grow into that responsibility. People look to you, people want to listen to you, people. And, and you know, you've got a responsibility to be, to be um, I mean, I hate to say Christ-like, but you, you've got to be Christ-like because you're representing the church. And, and if you, you know, you have to treat everybody with love and generosity and be there for them. And, and that takes some, you know, for somebody that that may not come natural to that's, that takes a little bit of formation. Okay, so, time. Yeah. And it's really, so it's not just that you're going to know all the theology and all, all that, but check it out. Does this ever happen to you? Like I was on the phone the other day talking to, uh, uh, you know, after my fourth or fifth time being transferred, trying to get to customer help, help, you know, and uh, and uh, so frustrated uh, trying to get someone to help me, but I'm thinking they might know who I am, so I better not blow it. They might know my name. Do you ever do you ever do you ever find yourself thinking twice? Like I better not oh. I better not I better not, I better not complain about this 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 grocery clerk here because I'm representing Christ, and they may know that that's what I do. Does that you know? You ever... What's really funny, Bear, is if you know I'm not a patient driver. So if you're in front of me and the right the red is the light is red. And you're sitting there on your phone, you're probably gonna hear not a nasty honk, but it's gonna be a little tap. And the, if I'm on my way to mass and I've got my collar on, guess what? My hand seized <laughs> off the horn. <laughs> so I, well, you know yeah. what they say? They say anyone who drives slower than you is an idiot. Anyone that drives faster, <laughs> anyone that drives faster than you is a maniac. We're talking with Deacon Kevin Posse. He's a deacon in Iowa. What's the city again? Sioux City. Beautiful, beautiful Sioux City, Iowa. And you can reach him where? posk63 at gmail.com. And that's that's P with like yeah. as in, yeah. yeah, as in, what would you P say? P Peter. Pinto, I think. P, P as in Peter. Okay. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. 
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to let you guys know if you want to power watch uh, all of our Long Ride Home TV show, which is uh, three seasons long. We're about to release season four. Go to deepadventure.com and become a member, and then you have access to all of our stuff, including all of all of our radio shows, all of our catechisms, all of our um, Long Ride Home TV series, and all the all of uh, every, everything else. Because we, Cindy and I, sometimes we just do fun stuff on 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 our YouTube channel too. So go to deepadventure.com and become a member. We're talking with Deacon Kevin Poss about his calling to be a deacon. Now, the, the thing about that is, is this is really something that it, you're, you said to me at the beginning, I see, Barry, you do all these adventures, and I'm, my, really my adventure is being a family. So tell us about that. As you're going through this formation, your wife and you went through this together. Tell us about the, about Start with kind of like the discernment process of getting started. And just people, there might be a handful of people listening that they're saying, the wife's going to reach over and go, honey, you need to be a deacon. Yeah, and and there have I've I've heard that too from other guys where the wife was the one saying I think you'd be a great deacon. Um, my wife wasn't saying that. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. She was very much for it when I said, you know, I think I think Joe's right. I think um, I I told her when I prayed about that, God's calling me to be a deacon, and so we prayed about it together. And you know, it was interesting. Um, we were going through formation and and. You know, the, the deacon director of this was very clear. If I'm called to be a deacon, she's called to be a deacon's wife. That's right. By virtue of our marriage. And she's been extremely supportive of me. My, my wife has got so many incredible talents. And one of hers is, is discernment. And um, Real, Yeah, women especially that. Oh, what a gift. Uh, I, I just, she can read people. So they, she's been on the right. deacon board that, that, you know, interviews the candidates and then reviews them year after year. And, and so she, you know, her insight is just so spot on and, you know, mm. um, her insight to, you know, where these people are and how they're doing and what's going on. And she's, she seems to be, you know, very spot on. And, and so she just got off the board, but she's been very, very much involved with, you know, the, the program and development and so on. And she has to be very accommodating too. You know, if I get a call and, you know, Hey, we've got a wake service tonight. I need you to do that wake service or, you know, if there's a baptism class or I chaperone a group to Steubenville, a youth group to Steubenville. I want to go. I, oh man, bear. I'm telling you, you got to go. You want to feel 16 again, go stand around with a bunch of 16, 17, 18 year old Catholic kids on fire for their faith, yeah. jumping up and down. And, and it's I've a beautiful. been there, but never during that event. Uh, so you, so well, you, so that, so is that part of your cross to carry those kids there or is it no i love it that's a that's a that's a great blessing to be able to go and and your wife goes with you nope she she doesn't go but um my grandson who is 17 carter is uh this will be his second year and he's dragging a couple other of his buddies along with him and he's he it was it was maybe one of the best moments of my life last year we're during adoration the highlight of steubenville is is adoration on saturday night is that when they and, bring the monstrance through or is it yes they bring the monsters and i mean these kids are on their knees they're crying it's and he it's, got up in the he I got hear, up in the middle of that and and walked up and gave me a hug and he just said i love you pop and it's like <laughs> you know take me now lord and i've it was, heard people it was, just the response at the steubenville to the to the procession like that i've heard so many stories of deliverance yeah. or people just saying yep What's happening? I mean, what, what, what did you guys get? Someone who's never, who wasn't a Christian, do you, do you realize that, you know, that the, the presence of God is so powerful in the Eucharist mm-hmm. that 
it just causes people to break and so um and so the formation though what is the five-year formation like just the just the uh just the um the progression yeah so you you start out and, and there's there's obviously old testament new testament we talk about the sacraments we talk about um you know spiritual growth and you know they look at spiritual growth intellectual growth um you know maturity um, and they're evaluating you know how are you going to do are you going to be able to um, stand in front of people and be able to explain the truths of the Catholic faith. Are you able to, you know, can you intellectually make sure you're on the right page? Uh, are you, do you have the right temperament to work with people? Are you going to be somebody that draws people in? Or are you going to be somebody that's, you know, might not be as uh, um, drawing in as, and, as we need to be. And so you go through those and then you get towards the end and you start practicing what you're going to do at mass and how you perform a baptism and, and preaching. Preaching is, um, you know, the most recognizable thing we do. And so it, you know, we work uh, for about a year on preaching. It's probably not long enough. We probably need to, you know, work on that longer because, you know, so many people, unfortunately, judge mass and judge a, a deacon or a priest on whether they're a good preacher or not. And that's you know, an unfortunate thing. My, my, dad, just- my dad was a, a great homilist. Before that, he was a professional speaker, but he he did his research and he was a great homilist and when i was with him just about two years ago uh uh then evening that he was dying i was with him and uh my dad was such a had such a great sense of humor but i was reading through his his notes and his this unique handwriting uh of his he didn't print it out on a computer his 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 homilies for his all of these homilies i was reading through them and i was uh and as i was reading out loud with my nephew next to me just he and i in the room we could sense that that my dad was about to take his last breath, and I got to hold, put my hand on his heart, and be with him. But of course, my dad, being being who he was, uh, at the funeral, I told them that we were, uh, at, when, whenever it was that I got to, you know, talk. Um, I told them, you know, we had been le- reading through my dad's homilies, and he died of boredom. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the, to hear it from, to hear the the gospel though from a from a deacon, not not a priest, but from a deacon who kind of lives a different life, you know, and, and can, can bring certain perspective. But my father said that weddings and funerals and baptisms, where he would get to officiate at those or celebrate those, uh, especially at funerals, he said he had the most, the most impact uh, there to reach people. But, but there's such an opportunity then in going and praying for people when they're sick and things. But but it's such a great, you're meeting people right at these moments, this, this key moment of marriage, the key moment of baptism, the key moment of the, of the funeral, that um, powerful, powerful opportunity for evangelism. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, uh, Baird. You know, at, at a wake service, you might, hear, you might have people in there that that's one of the few times they will hear anything about Jesus or the gospel. And, and it's a, I take it very seriously trying to... Um, take that opportunity to say, God loves you and he wants you and he's chasing you with all of his heart. And um, the other thing that I get to do as a deacon or a priest doesn't get to do is, you know, I'm a physical therapist and I often have time, oftentimes have people locked in a room where they can't escape. And, you know, it's very frequently that I will pray with or pray for somebody. I will ask them about, are you a church going girl or guy? And, and I'm able to have that one-on-one with people out in the world where a priest really doesn't get that opportunity. And so being a deacon yes. in the world gives you yes. that opportunity. Yes. Being in the world, you have actually more opportunity than most priests do to, to actually get to actually speak, the, to, to share the gospel with people. And that, that physical therapy, you know, when you met me the next day, when you guys went out sailing, I mean surfing, it was the next day I went in for my reattaching my hip. I had hoolied my canoe, uh, my outrigger, and I detached a muscle in my hip. And it was the next day when I went in for... Uh, for my surgery and, and Clyde Ike was saying, push, come here, bear. Why aren't you helping push this boat? <laughs> and I went to help and I was about to just go for it. I'd forgotten about my hip. And you said, now be careful of your hip. You know, you were watching out for me, yeah. letting Clyde know also. But the whole the whole realm of physical therapy is so much uh, the rehabbing of that is very much like often the rehabbing of our soul, you know. And uh, and so it's an interesting the, the 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 ministry have whether it's in your physical therapy work or as a deacon, how profound that. So what would you say to someone who's, well, one of the first steps in the diaconate is discerning, is a year of discernment or so. You just, what would you say someone should do if they're, if, if they're listening to this and they're saying, 
Uh, I'm not worthy to be a deacon. I, you know, I'm just kidding myself. Yeah. What, what would you tell them? What would be, what should they do? Well, first of all, I mean, the, the, the easy answer to that is, is God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And Praise so God. That, that's a and, comforting word. Say it again. Yeah. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Hmm. And so that's the first thing is if he calls you, then he will equip you with the gifts that you need to, to do it. And, you know, um, hey. He, and, the, he, and, the, and, and he will build the character that you need to, to do that. Absolutely. And, and so, you know, it, as everything, it, it goes to prayer. And then you take the first step and just say, okay, yes, Lord, if this is what you're calling me to, and you call the diocese and, and they'll gladly, you know, begin that process of discernment for you. I, 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 while I was going through deacon formation, you get interviewed by other people in the diaconate board. And one of them was a very busy sheriff. He was the sheriff of a of a fairly mm. rowdy county. Wow. And I was talking about time, time. Am I going to have time? And he said, listen, when my phone rings, I got to go. And he said, never once has, it, has my phone rung in the middle of me doing something serving God. He said, now I might walk out of the funeral or the wake and my phone might blow up, but God knows what time it is. And he knows he can, he, he's the author of time. He can make it so you get to whatever he wants. You I to love get. that guy. Yeah, he's a great. Yeah, guy. God's in what? charge of time, and he can increase your time uh, when you've given given him so much time. You know, Kevin, we got to go already. We're okay. with Deacon Kevin Poss, and where do we find you, Kevin? Deacon, I should Poss say. K sixty three at gmail dot com. Poss is with uh, P S and Peter, so Poss yep. K P O S S K sixty three at gmail dot com. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We sign off here, you know, in that unique way. So get ready to cover your ears because we're going to do our aloha. <laughs> aloha means to give breath. And that's what Jesus did, did for us when he said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his Holy Spirit. And so till next week, praise God, what a blessing to be on the EWTN network and what a blessing to be coming into your home and for you listening to us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Will you say it with me, Kevin? Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.